Want to score over 850 in your nursing fundamentals exam? Then let's get started. Today we're covering the topic isolation precautions, which is a commonly tested topic in both your fundamentals and NCLEX exam. A nurse is caring for a patient with a contagious respiratory infection. What type of precaution should be implemented? Standard, airborne, contact, droplet. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is B, airborne precautions. This is because respiratory infections that spread through the air require precautions to prevent airborne transmission. When caring for a patient on contact precautions, which personal protective equipment is essential? Mask and gown, gloves and mask, goggles and gloves, gown and gloves. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is D gown and gloves. Contact precautions are necessary to prevent the transmission of infections through direct or indirect contact, hence the need for gown and gloves. A patient with tuberculosis is admitted to the hospital. What precautions should be followed? Standard precautions, droplet precautions, airborne precautions, contact precautions. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is C. Airborne precautions. Tuberculosis is an airborne disease and precautions must be taken to prevent the inhalation of infectious particles. A nurse is caring for a patient with C. diff infection. What precaution is necessary? Airborne, droplet, contact, standard. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is C. Contact precautions. C. diff is transmitted through contact with contaminated surfaces, requiring precautions to prevent its spread. A patient is suspected of having meningitis. What precaution is appropriate? Standard, droplet, contact, airborne. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is B. Droplet precautions. Meningitis can spread through respiratory droplets, necessitating precautions to prevent transmission via droplets. A patient is diagnosed with chickenpox. What precaution is essential? Standard, airborne, contact, droplet. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is C, contact precautions. Chickenpox is highly contagious and primarily spreads through direct contact, emphasizing the need for contact precautions. When caring for a patient with influenza, which precaution is recommended? Standard, droplet, airborne, contact. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is B, droplet precautions. Influenza is transmitted through respiratory droplets, requiring precautions to prevent the spread of the virus. A patient with active TB is being transported within the hospital. What precaution should be followed during transport? Standard, airborne, contact, droplet. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is B, airborne precautions. Maintaining precautions during patient transport is crucial to prevent the spread of airborne infections like TB. A nurse is caring for a patient with draining wound that is heavily contaminated. What precaution is necessary? Standard, droplet, contact, airborne. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is A. Standard precautions. Standard precautions should always be followed when there is a risk of exposure to blood, body fluids, or contaminated items. A patient with a known respiratory infection is scheduled for diagnostic procedure. What precaution is appropriate during the procedure? Standard precautions, droplet, airborne, contact. Pause the video and select your answer. The correct answer is B, droplet precautions. During procedures that generate respiratory droplets, such as coughing or sneezing, precautions should be taken to prevent the transmission of respiratory infections. Comment below and let us know how you did. Click that subscribe button and look below in the description for what each precaution entails.